Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm here with Watercolor Flowers series number 22 with the Sketchy Flower Stamp Set from Altenew. This is a huge stamp. I had no idea how big this one is, and I wanted to show it to you. You can use any part of this, along with all these sentiments, to make a card. There's like innumerable layouts you can have for your flowers. I'm stamping it onto this smooth Bristol paper because I'm going to use the twin tip markers from Zig and show you kind of a fun technique to get a lot of color. But look at how big this stamp is. It's huge. Even in the Misty, you can kind of get an idea. It's giant. You could actually do a Bible journaling page with this if you're into stamping flowers in there because it's huge. And you can turn it all different directions. Now, for the flowers, I'm going to do one flower at real time speed here and then we're going to zoom through a lot of the rest because it's kind of self-explanatory as we go. But I put the light color down first and then the dark color and then the middle color and then go back with the light color. And you can see how nicely you can get a blend going. You can also blend then with water and just push that color around, that sort of thing. Speed it up slightly here for the rest of this flower. You can also do just the dark color first and then the middle color and then the light color because you can see how if you don't pull that color in from the edge you can retain the lightness of that light color because now I've got some red on my marker so it's a little harder to get that super light color with it. So start from the outside edge if you want a lighter color over the whole thing. But I'm just going to use a brush and move the color around and make these gorgeous flowers throughout the whole thing. And mostly I decided it worked better to put down the red and then the orange and then the yellow and then use a brush on it and not really worry about blending them until I got to the brush portion. And these markers are very much like the Zigs in terms of the ink that they have in them. So if you're used to that, these work about the same. And they are, they're the kind of color that likes to move when it gets on the paper and you hit it with water, it gets a little happy. A lot of the colors will change to neon colors because that's just how they roll with this ink. This is not, for those of you who have been asking, these are not, neither these nor the Zigs are actually watercolor. There are no water-based markers, except I think there's one that might be made by Winsor Newton that might come close. But most water-based markers are not watercolor markers. Even though we say we're watercoloring with them, they are not watercolor pigment. That's just a, a fact of life. So if you're expecting certain behaviors because you want it to look like your watercolors that you get out of your pans or out of your trays or out of your tubes, that's the reason why it won't. And it's okay that it doesn't. It's just a different technique and you'll have different adaptations that you'll make because of that. Now I wanted to have a really rich color card. Just lots and lots of color in every square lovely inch of this. And just started playing around with taking three colors. I just randomly picked a purple, a deep pink, and a wine red. And started moving them around. Now you can move the color around by layering it over top of each other and blending it that way. And I'm doing some of that as I go and just kind of going back into a few areas. But the blending on this doesn't come out as well sometimes as it would if the colors really went perfectly together. These are not colors that naturally I would say would be the perfect blending group for them. But I like the idea of having a background that almost looked like stone because I've been doing this with Copic markers a bit and I wanted to see if I could do that with these markers. And once I started adding the water to it, it started kind of blending and that sort of thing and looking a little more like this really cool painted background, which I really liked. And then I added my greens in. I didn't add the greens in earlier because I didn't want them to accidentally bleed into something if I touched it. Um, so here at the end, I could at least control where that green went. But all I did was wait for it to be completely dry so I could emboss my hello sentiment on top of it using some wow embossing ink and hero arts embossing powder and did a little flag on some yellow cardstock with the dearest friend portion on it and popped that up with some dimensional adhesive now here's one of the copic ones that i did 
very similar to this. I just used a lot of Copic ink in the background and mushed the color around. Didn't worry about it blending perfectly because I wanted it to look like it was kind of a painted background and focus my blending energy on the flowers themselves. So there you go. A beautiful stamp set. Lots of different ways that you can color it. Be sure to look in the description if you're looking for any supplies. Click on my face to subscribe to my channel. There's a bunch of classes over at artclasses.com if you're interested in more learning. Otherwise, watch some more videos and then go make something. I'll see you later.